<laughs> Little Gray Jay coming to munch on some bait I dropped for him. But hey guys, we're back down the line. Another beautiful day. I say it every time, but I'm dead serious every time. So we're chopping some bait, ready to go check traps. Ah, uh, we won't be pulling anything today. Everything out there for Wolverine and Wolf is still still open. So all the Wolverine Wolf sets will be there. We'll make sure that any snares that are too low will be raised up so they don't catch any lynx. And a lot of birds are out and about, so springtime is definitely humming. Waiting on eagles and hawks will be showing up here pretty quick. We got some uh, bloodshot caribou meat and some scraps that someone gave to me the other day. Uh, we let them sit out for a while, so maybe got a little bit of a smell on them. So we don't want you don't want it uh, rotten, but it's nice to have a little smell to get 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 the uh, get the smell of the meat carrying on. And there's a little buddy right there. Those gray jays, they'll come, they'll grab a chunk of meat, and right now he's stashing it in. Uh, kind of hard to see, but he's stashing it in a little a little branch full of snow over there. He's stashing that meat. Hey buddy, hey buddy, hey buddy. It's always good to feed the feed the little animals. Any bait that doesn't get uh, gobbled up inside sets gets thrown out on the ground too. Whenever it's uh, whenever the set is pulled, so animals will come by and eat that too. Get some bait chopped. Get out there and see if we got any wolf or wolverine out there. Temperature warms up. We're gonna make sure to chop fresh bait at every 3:30 set today, just to make sure that we get that fresh scent of meat. Just about every every trail out of Initai over the years, people have harvested wood. It's the main main source of our of our heat. So every trail out of town, any decent wood, any dried wood, you'll find places like this. See all the stumps. There's a quite a bit of those on every trail leading out of here. And you can see that they wasn't very much big wood back then. These a lot of this stuff was probably harvested back in the 80s, maybe even further back. So you can see even the trees, even the trees they ha didn't harvest haven't grown as big as some of the ones that were out here. This black spruce takes quite a while to grow, especially back here. It's kind of a swampy tundra area back here, and something about the water. It just really stunts these black spruce, like really stunts them. We've cut some of these trees before and counted rings, and these trees are really, really old. We have to do that again sometime just to show people how how old some of the even like the half dead, that half dead one back there. We'll cut something like that off, and there's only a couple of green branches, and everything else is just dead. So I guarantee that one year after year, it's technically growing. So rings are being added, but they're so small. That you did, sis. It's even it's even a little hard to count. Well, we'll have to get we'll have to get one of those cut up sometime to show y'all. Ancient woodyard. Coming down, baiting these three thirties, and we have a snapped one. The ground is pretty crunchy. I can't really see what came over this way. I see a lot of bird tracks. 
And it looks like maybe a set of Martin tracks had gone back there too. So he probably tried to drag out a chunk of bait and snapped it. So thankful he didn't catch it. Fur is not very good anymore. It's too late in the year. So we chop more bait. We'll reset that and head down the line. We've chopped some bait last week over there. And we had a lynx, a fox, maybe a coyote digging around at it. What I do when it comes to bait piles, I don't use a lot and I usually, where I have my baited areas with no traps around, all I'm doing is chopping the bait that I'm seeding on my line. So I chop that bait and the chunks that get knocked into the ground get left in the ground so these pieces just stay under there when they when i get when i chop into it so then everything will come around and dig at it oh, a raven was actually floating by over there a minute ago oh nope he's right up there so he was actually eating on the pile over here so that's perfect when it comes to wolverine wolverine love to go look around at what a raven's bothering we have wolf traps and wolf snares right around the corner over here. I don't want to stop over there, but uh, I'll be tossing some bait next to one of them and we'll pass through and continue on. So right here I have one of my one of my wolf sets that I use and so I'll, what I'll do is I'll walk through make a loop or make some little stringers that run off of here and so then I make sure that the trap is probably either on either end or all the way in the back so this one is over there and I spread bait out and buried bait back there too and you can see a fox came through and I didn't really want to stop right, right over the trap over there, but you can see that fox walked right on top of that pan back and forth a few times. Thank God I was able to tighten those pans up before I set it up. Keep those fox out of there. Make sure when wolf comes by, that one's going to snap on him. And so you can even see he went back where I threw more bait before. Bait it again. Couple more poles to tie in. 3.30. This burn back here is part of a fire that wiped through this area. At the same time, a fire was burning over the mountain that was over 600,000 acres. That was back in 2004. This area here burned that same year, kind of in a corridor in different sections up in that direction. So we're crossing over this part of the burn. We'll see if any wolves decided to cross through, but picking up some more poles to make some more 330 sets. I'm just gonna keep on setting them until the end of the season when we yank them all. It's gonna be nice, very nice. There's always moose and if there's caribou, they'll be crossed in this area right here. So this kind of runs parallel 
with the mountain up this way. If you look at it through Google Maps or Onyx Hunt, you can tell that this was like, this was a river at one point in time that flowed through here. Or animals like it. They can move through pretty easy and they can do so without getting too thick in the brush and not being able to see too far. So cow and calf, they'll, they'll hug the edge and they'll pass through. So look at that. There's a wolf track right there. Very cool. Yep, right there. They passed on by. They didn't go over and check out my set on this side, but I do have traps in that direction. Okay, the wolf trap is going up there where the wolves cross. So we'll get that, get that set and go set it up there. All right, we got another number five right in row with this. Toggle is buried here. I'll drive the snow machine right up next to the toggle and wipe out these tracks. And we'll head down and see if the wolves decided to check out a few baited sets and some snares. The wind is starting to kick up, but it's still about 10 above at least. In the sun, it's probably almost 30. But the wind is keeping everything pretty cool. So, start up the ride, head in that direction. So that pack came on through, but these ones are quite a bit larger than the last pack that came through. There's a couple of big boys in there. You can see them going out and around my 330 set here. Doesn't look like they bothered any of the bait that was buried over here. So you got snares hanging in there, but these these wolves are way too cautious and way too way too old to ever mess around with that. The moose guts look like some birds got into that one. Yep, look at that. The wolves just ran right around. That's to be expected with wolves most of the time. And that's the ones you want to catch anyway, so we'll see. What's further down the line? Got some more bait for this 330. Let's see if anything came around back here. Doesn't look like it. With these trails, with these trails right here, there's not really a good way to go back and set a snare there because they're leaping. 
and they're leaping they can actually get their front two feet pretty high up into any snare that you set so i don't usually set on those unless they pack it down a little closer together their feet a little closer together so something like this is planned to set a snare on but something where they're leaping six to eight feet it's not worth it you might end up ruining a ruining a pelt by getting uh getting the cable wrapped around his chest or its belly so more bait for this one i think it's about lunch time we got wolf snare over here where the trail kind of where they slowed down on their running and we just got a just a snare hanging up over there if anything even if that keeps him from going that way if it catches him or it keeps him from going that way that's exactly what we want to do so it's not good to force wolves to do things sometimes but in others if there's a lot of choices you can force them to move around so we'll see how that works Like more fox came by here. The birds messed with that over there. Looks like he walked through and took the bait from under there. <clears throat> but nothing came by to bother this one. So more bait, keep going. <laughs> Something ate a bunch of bait out of there. I guess today is be gonna be a baiting day on this side of the line. But can't beat a day out here. Driving along, and I had a branch reach out and take my earmuffs right off the top of my head. <laughs> this stick right here caught my earmuffs. There they are. That culprit won't be grabbing my earmuffs ever again in the pile. Time to go. for lunch 
cooking some MRE Mountain House freeze yard food. Works pretty good out here. And all you have to do is heat up water. So in these two boxes right here, I hold most all my gear. Two extra gloves, GoPro equipment, goggles, hat, energy drink, headlamp, a little bit of everything, game call, extra mags, saw, thermos of water, mitts, and then all my other gear in here. I was hoping we'd come out and mark some push-ups and I see one, two, three, there's a few of them. We'll go poke around after lunch and just get them all marked up. Chicken and rice. Chicken and rice it is. It's always important to have a good knife. So I have skinning knives in my pack. Buck knife and another nice skinning knife that I got from a, from a new friend that we met down in South Dakota. But this, this is just something I picked up off of eBay. So this doesn't do a whole lot of, whole lot of work. It's just the knife on my side. If anything ever happens, I always have this. This is a double-sided D2 steel blade it's a decent decent knife pretty sharp definitely something that i can grab in a hurry if i need to wait for the orange it's almost there Okay, this is gonna need to sit for a minute. We'll go hit some of these muskrat houses. Just got done eating lunch, looking out over there. And this lake is called 14 Mile Lake. And I remember one, one springtime, me and my wife came driving through, dragging a tire through for a dog mushing track up here. And way over there, there's some ribbon there. And that's where the trail jumps off, jumps off the lake and then loops around and goes back. So we we're driving through there, my wife spots out a shovel. The shovel belonged to my great uncle Judify Henry, Abraham Henry. I shared a video with an interview of him a while back on my community post page. But we brought it back and his wife was still alive then and we ended up dropping it off to him and oh man, she got mad. He, she didn't know that he was up here trapping. So he was, at that time he was right around 80 years old and she was telling him that he wasn't allowed to go trapping anymore but he was still sneaking out coming and he left some tools out here hanging in a tree and we didn't know that we were uh <laughs> we didn't know that we were giving them up by dropping that off to him but that ended up happening two different times we ended up finding a bag of his pulleys and stuff that must have fell off his sled uh another eight miles on the other side and we did the same thing dropped it off to his house and she ended up finding out and was pretty ticked with him but it was just pretty funny. He's, he was like 80 years old and running off to set traps. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Oh, just got done, got done munching out. So it's time to head on down the line, keep on baiting and we'll see what, what shows up next. Muskrat push-ups, all around. Get some bait on the ground, and let's go. So 
it looks like a wolf came, tore up this push-up, moved on to the next push-up, and the next. He didn't go out and bother the ones out on this one though, so yeah, look at that, he wiped it out. But we get fat on muskrats. Looks like they were dragging that muskrat right on by. Water still going up. 3.30, ready to go. Birds are singing. Snow is melting. Smells like spring. This trench right here is part of a project 20 years ago. So the creek over here called Kogoch oh, Big Creek, used to flow into the Vini Tai Lake, we call it Big Lake, Bunch of Vey. And for over the years, the water level has gone up, up on the lake, and the slough that came through got completely choked out with trees. So about 20 years ago, they came through and ran a cat through knocked out everything but it's still never the water never got high enough on that end to clear all this out all the way to big lake so this is going to be a project in the future that might be might be worth might be worth a try so if it works out we'll be able to get fish back in the lake over here we'll see how it works it might not work but if it does it'll be pretty interesting and it'll be a pretty big project it will be very, very cool. Redirecting a river. Back here is where my dad really trained me up on trapping lynx. Back in this little trail up here, my brother, my younger brother used to trap on and my dad and his grandpa, my great grandpa, but we are making sure that all our lynx snares that were out here, they're not lynx snares, but the wolf snares that were set up for lynx, since lynx season is just about over, we gotta make sure that we lower those snares for only wolverine. So that means that we gotta make sure the snare is fairly small and very low. So. Even this trail set right here is a little bit too, a little bit too big and a little too high. So a wolverine, you want it fairly low. They don't have the biggest head. They got a pretty tough neck, but they don't have the biggest head. So you don't have to go too high up. Just as long as he doesn't try to stick his paw through it. And they lumber along pretty good, so. As long as you set it up right, it should work out just fine. Well, even just like that, it's not too bad. Get that stick a little lower. He probably won't stick his paw through there. So right there, that's turning a link set into a Wolverine snare, this low on the ground. So that thing is pretty low. His head sticks out in front of him as he walks. So hopefully he'll put his head through and carry on through like that. So. Get that reset. And we'll do that to a few more trail sets we have, make sure that they're low enough that they won't catch a lynx. And then we're on down that way.
you have enough stuff going across. Haven't had to use a riser stick underneath. Most of the time they walk with their heads out in front of their feet. So he should be able to get his head caught right in there. Another, another trail set for a wolverine. And a lynx should have his head too high that he should just knock it down if he walks by. Still wolf snares back there. On to the next. Oh, it's always 10 foot high and rising. So this has been where the otter crosses every year. We got a trail that goes back over to that trail set with a 330 on it. So this is actually a good thing for otter because the otter will now be running the banks. Perfect wolverine height. Hope he comes through. So that other pack over here swung through. It looks like they hit they hit some of the bait back here, but they stayed away from the snares and a few of those traps. But they dropped a couple turds. We'll scoop up some of this crap here. I scooped up some on the other side of the line. We'll mix it with the uh, we'll mix it with the turd that we got on the other side. Those wolves stuck off back there a little ways. I hope they come back around. There was a lonely lynx track walking down the trail too. Hopefully he goes right on by all our sets there. But we're pulling for those wolves to pop back on right up here. Just baited the whole set with bait, circling this whole area right here with all the snares and traps that I have around this spot. This is the last spot before I get back to Vinitai. So no Wolverine. Uh, the wolves uh, kind of teased me. They hung near part of my two edges of my line back there, but no luck. So they're wised up, wised up to my plans. Next year, I move my line, I bump it over, I switch it up. Whenever they start wising up to what's going on, I'll end up switching it up. I don't have a lot of time left this year to be moving that stuff around, so we'll have it out until the end of the season. But man, it's a beautiful day. Beautiful day in Alaska. All right, God bless you. I'll take care. I'll see you again next week. <laughs>